Well, first, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was... Whatever term you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So what we look at as, as surprise mechanics. So one of my primary fears with governments getting involved in any capacity and taking action against gaming issues like loot boxes and predatory monetization has been the real possibility that the scope may become larger and government bodies worldwide start taking a look at other things. And the other day when Epic Games and Electronic Arts spoke to the UK Parliament, it confirmed my suspicions a little bit, but it also proved one massive issue that this whole industry cannot seem to understand. That simply is this industry is too incompetent to realize that not self-regulating will have severe consequences. Today we have a lot to discuss. I have purposefully neglected to tackle this topic for the last few weeks because I wanted to see how it developed. So we are going to be going over updates surrounding the United States anti-loot box bill introduced by Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri, the EA CEO's newest defense of surprise mechanics, the latest predatory monetization done by Bethesda, Activision, and 2K Games, Polygon's bizarre defense of the video game industry, which essentially boils down to think about the billionaires because yes, we have to think about them. And lastly, of course, the very concerning comments Electronic Arts and Epic Games gave to the UK Parliament just a few days ago. Lots of quote-unquote surprises within this video, but if you haven't already, consider subscribing for all the latest gaming news, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any new content. Also, do check out and follow my other social media accounts, like Twitter especially, since YouTube is full of quite a few surprises these days, which has me concerned for the future. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, the Entertainment Software Association, the lobbyist trade group that represents most of the video game publishers, that includes Bethesda, Electronic Arts, Activision Blizzard, Epic Games, Konami, Ubisoft, Nintendo, Tencent, Deep Silver, and so on and so forth, have been fighting legislation for years, and they've been successful for the most part. But I'm going to be honest, things have changed, and if I had to identify a point where everything changed, I think it's without a doubt when Electronic Arts tried turning Star Wars Battlefront 2, a beloved franchise, into Star Wars Ultimate Team, which that was obviously in late 2017 when all that controversy occurred. At that moment, it finally exposed to the world outside of gaming how serious predatory monetization has become, and how many of these entertainment companies are run by corporate vultures who have little to no care of how loot boxes that really are slot machines can be harmful to players, especially children. Recently we had EA's FIFA Ultimate Team developers addressing accusations of predatory monetization, which some players have described as pay to win. These EA developers could not stop laughing throughout this interview because they think this subject is so hilarious, but essentially their defense of the game's loot boxes boils down to, have you seen those YouTube videos where players have no money spent teams? It's possible to get a good team that way, so I guess that excuses the predatory nature of the mode which, like any of these sports games, almost forces you to spend real-world money on microtransactions, or you the player face a ridiculous grind wall which could take hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours to get the cards that you want or need to compete. Oh, and also something else I found rather interesting about this interview is the amount of times these FIFA developers repeated they didn't view the game's loot boxes as gambling. As I said before, and as I'll say now, you can keep telling yourself that, but it's not true. You have to wonder how many players are being taken advantage by these gambling mechanics, not knowing they're spending thousands of dollars on a predatory video game. In this one case, you had a guy who submitted a GDPR request to finding and probably realizing he has an addiction problem, spending thousands of dollars on a mechanic that is closer to a slot machine than baseball cards. Electronic Arts certainly isn't the only company using this feature. Activision has been slowly making Call of Duty Black Ops 4 more and more greedy, recently adding weapons to to the game's loot boxes like we all knew eventually would happen, but what's even worse is that one of the DLC weapons that you can only find in the game's loot boxes was overpowered, with those lucky enough to obtain the weapon demanding the developer Treyarch to nerf it, which they eventually did. But even outside of console gaming, you have Bethesda with the Elder Scrolls Blades doing the exact same BS, which really is the perfect representation of why most gamers can't take mobile gaming seriously. The video game industry has a real problem that they wish to ignore, which 
which that dumb decision is and already has brought consequences. Obviously thus far only Belgium and the Netherlands have made rulings banning certain loot box features, but I truly believe this is just the beginning. There's governments worldwide investigating and the Entertainment Software Association just continues to fight. In the United States recently, the ESA told the Washington Post that they had successfully defeated in 2018 24 bills aimed at regulating loot boxes that were introduced in 9 states. But here in 2019, the problem isn't going away as this has now become a larger issue as a bill has been introduced on a federal level with bipartisan support. The bill specifically says that it would find it unlawful for a game publisher to publish a minor oriented game that includes pay to win microtransactions or loot boxes or and this is extremely important since many game publishers like Electronic Arts and Activision like introducing predatory microtransactions after launch once copies are sold and reviews are written it would be unlawful for a publisher to update an existing minor oriented game that would enable pay to win microtransactions or loot boxes in such game as I said before, this bill has received bipartisan support. Senator Josh Hawley is a conservative from Missouri. And the two Democrats that endorse this bill include Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, who states Congress must send a clear warning to app developers and tech companies, children are not cash cows to exploit for profit. And the other senator to endorse the bill is Ed Markey of my home state, Massachusetts, who stated, Today's digital entertainment ecosystem is an online gauntlet for children, inherently manipulative game features that take advantage of kids and turn playtime into pay time should be out of bounds. Now, as one might expect, the video game industry was not happy about this bill's announcement, with the ESA slamming back, saying in a statement, this legislation is flawed and riddled with inaccuracies. It does not reflect how video games work, nor how our industry strives to deliver innovative and compelling entertainment experiences to our audiences. The impact of this bill would be far-reaching and ultimately prove harmful to the player experience, not to mention the more than 220,000 Americans employed by the video game industry. We encourage the bill's co-sponsors to work with us to raise awareness about the tools and information in place that keep the control of video game play and in-game spending in parents' hands rather than in the government's. Look, I would agree with that position if this gaming industry was doing anything about scaling back on predatory monetization features like loot boxes, one that has been linked directly to gambling, but this industry just doesn't want to do anything, which is the core problem. Many game companies like Electronic Arts, Activision Blizzard and Take-Two Interactive have built their businesses on unsustainable greed, and they rely on predatory monetization to satisfy investors, which is something that long-term cannot work. Heck, many of these companies have hit a ceiling already, which unfortunately means tons of lost jobs and studio closures. But just look at a game like NBA 2K19, already loaded with slimy microtransactions that players have complained about with every year's new installment, but just recently 2K Games, the developer, has expanded on monetization by incorporating unskippable in-game advertisements in a $60 game. The game publishers are going to keep pushing forward with more and more monetization opportunities until something is done about this. It will only get worse for players. So, Josh Hawley speaking to Kotaku did state that FIFA Ultimate Team is indeed one of his games being targeted with this proposed legislation, something Electronic Arts is obviously not pleased with. He specifically said FIFA would indeed be covered by this legislation to be clear. Electronic Arts has certainly expressed their, shall we say, concern over this legislation, but I think that's probably a good indication that we're getting somewhere. Just recently, GameDaily.biz actually discussed with Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson his thoughts on loot boxes, and I found it very interesting that he downplayed that terminology, saying, whether it's direct purchase or this mystery box style that's become commonly referred to as loot boxes, we really think about four key vectors, value, fairness, choice, and fun. We want to feel like we got a good deal. Now, we would further defend loot boxes and make it seem like they are actively addressing this issue. They're not. We want to talk to a lot of regulators around the world. There's no sleight of hand here. If it's ultimately found that any form of monetization is inappropriate, we'll do something different. Many territories and many regulators have tested it and found it to be completely fine in the same way that collecting baseball cards or kiss cards is fine. So, what we did last year ahead of, I think, anyone in the industry is we went out and we started providing odds and being very transparent about the chances that you're going to get whatever it might be in one of those packs. We're going to continue to do that because our objective was never to be opaque. The important thing to note is that many countries have not declared it completely fine, and an Australian study already proved that the comparison to baseball cards is inaccurate. Oh, and countries like China actually have laws forcing game companies to show pack odds, so this 
this isn't taking action, this is doing the bare minimum. Now, I started this video with a clip of EA's Vice President of Legal and Government Affairs, Kerry Hopkins, speaking to the UK Parliament telling them what I consider a lie, that they being electronic arts actually call loot boxes surprise mechanics. I find it rather interesting whenever a certain term like games as a service receives tons of scrutiny and outrage, a new term is invented by this industry to replace the old controversial one, which in this case all I hear nowadays are live service experiences, but even then that'll likely evolve into something else soon. Electronic Arts can try escaping loot boxes, but they are the one company that has profited off this slimy greedy monetization the most. Now Kerry Hopkins did have further comment that I want to briefly go over, because it shows shows how Electronic Arts truly feels. So she describes these surprise mechanics by bringing up someone going to Target for a toy. What you'll find is that this is something people enjoy, they enjoy surprises. And so it's, it's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA of course is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team in our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. At this point, I just feel like this gaming industry likes to throw whatever dumb defense they can come up with and see if it sticks. There is no scientific research or studies that have found loot boxes are like toys, but there have been a few big studies finding the opposite. Loot boxes aren't like Kinder Eggs or baseball cards. They are slot machines, Electronic Arts. We agree with the UK Gambling Commission, the Australian Gambling Commission, and many other gambling commissions that they aren't gambling, and we also disagree that there's evidence that shows it leads to gambling. Instead, we think it's like many other products that people enjoy in a very healthy way uh, and like the element of surprise. I wish that this Electronic Arts representative would just start laughing because not one person is buying this BS argument. It's also quite laughable EA disagrees with the studies disproving the dumb defense that they keep making. Anyway, this EA rep would continue on claiming that what they have with FIFA Ultimate Team is quite ethical and enjoyable, which to that I would ask then, if you fully support surprise mechanics and think everyone loves them, why remove them from Battlefront 2? Why promote Jedi Fallen Order with the promise of no loot boxes? You cannot have this bold both ways, and there's nothing ethical about turning a game into a casino. While this part has been the main focus of anger from gamers, what I find even more concerning is Epic Games' response to the UK Parliament on excessive playtime, because as I fear, the scope is growing and governments are inquiring about other aspects of gaming. Unfortunately, this video game industry has given governments worldwide the impression that they cannot self-regulate anymore, which means more scrutiny is coming for other aspects of gaming, like how long kids are playing a game or how mature content is handled in a game. The video game industry as a whole is to blame for this, and with EA and Epic Games sounding incompetent in front of Parliament, it just tells me that things could get even worse if something doesn't change. At one point, Epic Games' legal counsel told the UK Parliament that it was inaccurate to define Epic as a company which makes money from people playing its games, to which the committee chair responded, you are not a charity. The issue with any regulation on loot boxes is that it could open the floodgates to other aspects of games that lawmakers take issue with, which is why I find it foolish that this industry does not want to self-regulate. They are fighting a losing battle. Polygon recently had an article that defended loot boxes, essentially saying that how else can companies like EA make a billion dollars every year with FIFA? And to that I would argue, why is that my problem? These games existed before without loot boxes and were still quite profitable, and I can guarantee without predatory monetization they still will or would make a lot of money. If these companies need need loot boxes and other pay to win mechanics to make a billion dollars, I think that isn't my problem, that's a company's who's being greedy's problem. At one point in this article, Polygon tries arguing because an NBA 2K developer's kids like having the choice to spend money to have their players grade immediately, and I guess is an excuse for companies like Electronic Arts and 2K Games implementing horrendous pathetic monetization systems that exploit its players. I think one of the main points I wanted to make with this video is that regulation is inevitable and a slippery road. I've said for a long time self-regulation is what this gaming industry should do. They need to recognize this problem and properly address it, but they won't because it brings too much money in. These game executives could care less about their employees, the products they release, or their consumers. It's always going to be about the money. The ESA has chosen to fight these loot box bills and based on rulings made in countries like Belgium, clearly that strategy is 
was not entirely working. An important thing to note is that Take-Two Interactive's CEO Strauss Zelnick is on the board of the ESA, and has also defended loot boxes. The CEO of Zenimax, which owns Bethesda, Robert Altman, is the chairman of the ESA's board. The ESA represents most of this gaming industry, and right now, I'm of the opinion that because this gaming industry doesn't want to change, government regulation is their fault, and I'm having trouble feeling bad for companies like Activision, who avoid paying taxes and are all around horrible to workers and consumers. My one hope is that government regulation, like in Belgium, will stick just to predatory monetization and not turn into something else, but time will tell, and definitely, I think it's unfortunate but not all that surprising that this gaming industry has chosen a dangerous path, which at the very least will come with a lot of fun surprises. Anyway, what is your opinion on the defenses being made for loot boxes by the video game industry? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games. And again, thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.